عبادك الأيام فتا وحروف الخفض The letters of حروف الخفض هي من The word من ولها معان and it has many meanings The word min has many meanings. Min ha from its meanings are al ibtida'u to start from somewhere. Ibtida means beginning. From basically. From when it from its meanings is the word min meaning from. Because from shows what? That something started from somewhere. Like Nahu Safartu min al Kahirati. I travelled from Cairo. Safar. Two. Where's the two? Where's the I? I by the two by itself is I. Okay? The two by itself is an I. It's the subject. Safara is the verb. Fa'il madi. Min al qahirati. The min is harfu jar, which is the min. And al qahira. Al qahira. So why is it again min al qahira? Because the min here is lil tika is sakirin. The two sukuns can't meet, so when there's a fear of two sukuns to meet, the, the noon on the mi, min becomes a fatha. Instead of being min, it becomes minal. Why? Because there's a sukun on the lam, and there's a sukun on the on the noon. If there's two sukuns, they hit each other, it becomes what? Two sukuns. In the Arabic language, you can't pronounce two sukuns. So it becomes what? Lil tiqa So we say minal. So that's one. Second, what harf al khafd is what? Um, harf al harf al khafd is ila. Wa min maaniha from its meaning is al intiha. It's the opposite to the word ibtida. Ibtida is the begin, and intiha is to finish. It's two. It's the ending point. So intiha is the opposite to the word ibtida. Intiha means to end. So the word ila is two. The, uh, uh, the other meanings that it carries is two, which is intiha, finish. Good. For example, safar to, I travel to. Ilal iskandariya, ilal iskandariya. So here it means I ended at iskandariya. That was intiha, that was the ending. Okay? Iskandariya is uh, Alexandria. Um, in Egypt. Wa an. An means what? Wa mim. These all have more than one meanings, but the Sheikh is saying min a tabiriya from its meanings. These are just some from its meanings. Some meanings. Meanings. Wa min maani ha from its meaning is what? Al mujawaza to mujawaza is to surpass. Are you with me? It is to is to surpass. نعم. Like رميت سهم عن القوس I threw the arrow from the bow Now pay attention عن is the usage What did it do the arrow when it goes through the bow It goes through it مجاوزة is this is to go through something For example if I say أخي جاوزت الحد You've surpassed the level l- limit You've passed it. The arrow passes through the bow. That's called mujawaza. When the Prophet spoke about the Khawarij, what did he say? The Quran la yujawizu hanajarahum. It does not pass their throat. You see? Rameitu sahma. I threw the arrow. The word rami in Arabic is to throw something. But here, what, it would, what would it mean? When the arrow is put, placed inside the bow and it is. It's Rami in the Arabic language. Anil Qawsi, the Qawsi is the bow, the bow. The bow. Ala. Wa min ma'aniha, the word ala is also harfu min huruf al khafti. Wa min ma'aniha, from its meaning is what? Al isti'la. Al isti'la is to be above. Isti'la means what? Is to go above, is to go high, above something. That's from its meanings. Nahu, for example, Sa'id to Alal Jabali. I climbed. Sa'ad, what does it mean? It's to climb somewhere. 
I climbed on the mountain. So the word ala shows on or above. Are you with me? Wa fi. The word fi. The word fi is wa min ma'aniha dharfiyatu. The word fi is shows dharfiyah. Dharfiyah means what? To be inside something. It's to be in something. For example, you say al ma'u, the water fil kuzi is inside the vessel. It's inside the cup. Are you with me? Wa rubba. And the word rubba. The word rubba is harf min huruf al khafti. What does the word rubba mean? Wa min ma'aniha from its meaning is what? At taqlilu. Little. Little. You want to say something little, does that happen? Rubba. May happen. Huh? So example, look what he say. Rubba rajulin kareemin qabalani. Maybe uh, a generous man may meet me. A generous man is very little in number. You see? So the word rubba, it shows at taqlil. It shows what? At taqlil. Little does that happen. Wal ba'u. The word ba' means what? The word ba' means ma'aniha ta'addiya. From its meaning is at ta'addiya. Are you with me? It has the meaning at ta'addiya. Ta'addiya is, it means also what? It has that meaning which is to, try, to surpass. Are you with me? For example, maratu bil wadi. I went by the wadi. The bahia it shows that adayta, that you crossed, you crossed the valley. Maratu, I came by bil wadi. Ta'adiyya is to cross something. Wal kafu, the kaf. The word the kaf is what? Wamim ani had tashbihu. It's to resemble something with something. The kaf is what? It's to resemble something with something. For example, you say, Layla kal badri. The woman Layla, she's like the moon. You're resembling her to the moon. Layla is like the moon. The moon, full moon is the full moon. Badr is like the full moon. So she's like the full moon. Like. The kaf is like. Wallamu. The lamb. Wa min ma'aniha from its meaning is what? Al milku. Ownership of something. Are you with me? Are you with me? The lamb is milk, ownership. Good. The lamb, it comes in three meanings. The sheikh is only mentioned here one, which is milkia. It is also lamb al and it's also lamb al Are you with me? Lamb al and lamb al and it's good that you learn it. But what you also need to know is what's the dhabit for each one. How can I identify which one it is? How do I know when it's lamul mulk? When it's lamul mulk? Or when it's lamul ikhtisas? Or when it's lamul istihqaq? How can I identify? I really want to know. Are you with me? It's very simple. The dhabit is as follows. Dhabidu lamul milki. Write this one down. Which is lamul milki, the one that the author mentioned. Lamul milk. Milk, but first of all, what does it mean? It means ownership. The lamb of ownership. Sometimes it's used as ownership. How do I identify that one? First of all, when it's lamul milk, the dhabit for it is an taqa'bayna dhatayni. It falls between two that, two things. For example, al-malu and Muhammad. Muhammad is a that and mal is a that. An taqa' it, play, it falls between what? An taqa'bayna dhatayni. It falls between two things. Good. And the first one, uh, the first one can fall under the second one. Are you with me? The money, it can fall under, the, under Muhammad. This is called what? It's called Lamu, Lamu al-Milki. Lamu al-Milki. Meaning Muhammad can own the wealth. There's, yes, he can own wealth. Ownership. Now we say Lamul. Are you with me? Ah, the author did mention it. Subhanallah, he mentioned them three. He did mention it. The second one is Lamul Ikhtisas. Lamul Ikhtisas is what? Is Antaka Abayna Dhatayni. It falls between two that. It's the same as what? Lamul Milki. It's like what? Lamul Milki. Good. 
but the first one can't it can't fall under it. Like for example, the example that the author gave, which is Al Babu Lidari. Can the door can the house own the door? Can the house own a door? A house can't own anything. So when you say Al Babu the door, Lidari it's 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 the the door is the houses. The house can't own anything. The house cannot own anything. It is not something that can own something or lose something. It can't be. Lidarika is called ikhtisas. It's specifically for this house. So, and taqa'a bayna it falls between two that because it is bab and dar. The lamb fell between the two of them, but the house cannot own it. Good. Al istihqaq is what? It doesn't fall between two that. It falls between, ha? Huh? It falls between. Bayna ismu thatin, a name of a that. Like lafzul jalala, like the name of Allah, wa ismu ma'nan, and a name of a meaning. So it's a name of a that, and a name of a meaning. And that is like Alhamdu is a name of a meaning. And Allah is a ismu lidatin. This one is called istihqaq. And it's also it's disputed whether it can fall under ikhtisas. There is dispute on that as well. But it's better to put it under istihqaq. The reason why it's better to put it under istihqaq is because ikhtisas, if you say it, then that means no one else deserves to be praised. Even though Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin argued that it doesn't have to show that meaning, and that's another discussion, insha'Allah ta'ala. وَمِنْ حُرُوفِ الْخَفْضِ وَمِنْ حُرُوفِ الْخَفْضِ From the meanings of khafd is what? Sorry, sorry. From the huruf which is khafd is huruf al-qasam. Huruf al-qasam, the huruf which are used as an oath. They use as what? As an oath. وَهِيَ ثَلَاثَةُ أَحْرُوفٍ And it's three huruf, three huruf, three what are they? Al awalul wow. The first one is a wow. Now you have to learn the difference between each one. Wahiya la tatkul illa ala al ismi zahiri. The wow only enters into an apparent name. The wow only enters into an apparent name. Such as Wallahi Allah. Wa tori, for example. Wa kitabin. Wa nahu. Wa tini. Wa zaytuni. What sinina? So it, look where it entered. It entered Allah. It entered Tor. It entered Kitab. It entered Teen. It entered Zaytun. And it entered Tor. All of those, all of them, what do they have in common? All of them are Asma, which are Zahira, apparent names. So it enters onto any apparent name. So it doesn't enter into a, now, a pronoun. It won't enter a tail, Are you with me? Very good. The second one is Al Ba. وَلَا تَخْتَصُ بِلَفْضٍ دُونَ لَفْضٍ بَلْ تَدْخُلُ عَلَى الْإِسْمِ الظَّاهِرِ This one is not specific to a word of, over another one. Meaning it enters onto a ism ظَاهِر Any one of them, it doesn't matter. Such as for example you say بِاللَّهِ by Allah لَأَجْتَهِدَنَّ I will strive. وَعَلَى الضَّمِيرِ And it also enters onto a pronoun. So you can say بِكَ لَأَضْرِبَنَّ الْكَسُولَ By you, I promise, I will kill, I will hit the lazy one. So it entered the word بِكَ Good. So if we look again, the wow enters what? The wow enters ism ظاهر. It doesn't enter a pronoun. The ba is the most strongest one. I mean, it's the most generalist one. What does it go into? It goes into all ism zahir and not specific to anyone, any, any of them. And it also enters what? It also enters a pronoun. The third one is what? The third one is the ta. The ta only enters Allah. You can never use it for anything other than Allah's name. Such as Qawluhu Ta'ala in Surah Al-Anbiya, Allah says, as the Sheikh brought his example, at wa tatkul illa ala lafz al-jalalati. It does not enter except the name of Allah. Such as وَتَاللَّهِ لَأَكِيدَنَّ أَصْنَامَكُمْ By Allah, I will destroy your, your idols. As ilatun. Question. Now we're going to go to the questions. 
As'ilatun questions. Ma alamatul ismi? Ah, this is a homework, inshallah ta'ala, which I'm going to look at. Ma alamatul ismi? What are the signs of a noun? Ma ma'ana al khafdi lughatan wa stilahan? What is the meaning of khafd linguistically and technically? Ma huwa al tanween lughatan wa stilahan? What is tanween linguistically and technically? Ala ayy shay'in tadullu al huruf al atiya? What does these upcoming words, what do they show? Min, lam, al kafu, rubba, an, fi. What are they? What do they mean? ما الذي تختص واو القسم بالدخول عليه من أنواع الأسماء؟ The واو القسم. What is it specific to that it enters from the nouns? What noun is it, is it specific to? ما الذي تختص تاء القسم بالدخول عليه؟ The تاء القسم. What is it specific to that it enters into? مثل لباء القسم بمثالين مختلفين. مثل لباء القسم مثالين مختلفين دباء القسم give two different examples for it that was questions now it's exercises تمارين تمارين is exercising ميز الأسماء التي في الجمل الآتية distinguish categorize the, the nouns that are in the upcoming sentences مع ذكر العلامة التي عرفت بها اسميتها by mentioning what sign allowed you to know that it was a noun how did you know it was a noun and they are here بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر وإلهكم إله واحد الرحمن فاسأل به خبيرا قل إن صلاتي ونسكي ومحياي ومماتي لله رب العالمين لا شريك له وبذلك أمرت وأنا أول المسلمين All of those ayat What is a noun? You mention it And once you mention it You tell us How did you know that it was an ism? Ah, you're going to mention The علامة التي عرفت بها اسميتها That allowed you to know that it was a noun We finished علامات الاسم now that's over. Alamatul ism is over now. We're going to go to alamatul fi'li. The signs of the, the signs of the verb is what we're going to go into. قال الإمام الأجروم he said والفعل يعرف بقد وسين والفعل يعرف بقد والسين وسوف وتاء التأنيث الساكنة The verb, the signs that are the the, the signs that are uniquely known for the verbs. What are they? والفعل أي ذاب يعرف it is recognized and it's known with the upcoming signs بقد the word قد it says unique sign for a verb والسين the letter سين وسوف and the word سوف وتاء التأنيث الساكنة and the تاء التأنيث الساكنة it is a تاء that has a سكون on it and that shows it feminine it's a تاء the تاء that it has a, it has a sukoon on it, and it shows that it's a feminine. So how many signs has he given us for the verb? He's given us one, qat, two, seen, three, sofa, and four, ta'i ta'neeth as sakina four signs, four alamat, for us to identify and to know what is a verb. Good. Now we're going to go to the sharah of Muhammad Muhyiddin Abdul Hamid, sahib al He said, wa I will say, يتميز الفعل عن يتميز الفعل عن أخويه الاسم والحرف بأربع علامات. The verb is distinguished from or is categorized from its two brothers, noun and a particle with four signs. Four signs is how you would know a verb from a particle and from a noun. متى وجدت فيه واحدة منها whenever you find any one of these four أو رأيت أنه يقبلها or you see that it accepts any of these four whether you see in it or that you find out that it accepts it عرفت أنه فعل you will know and recognize that it's a verb الأولى the first one قد والثانية the second one السين 
والثالثة the third one سوف والرابعة the fourth one تاء التأنيث الساكنة now we're gonna go into each one إن شاء الله تعالى أما قد أسف قد the first one أما قد أسف قد فتدخل it enters على نوعين من الفعل أسف قد it enters the two types of a verb وهما and they are those two types الماضي والمضارع the past verb and the present verb both of them قد will enter it آه قد enters into ماضي and it enters onto مضارع but what's the difference if they enter both of them how this is going to tell us فإذا دخلت على الفعل if it enters onto a verb الماضي the past verb if it enters onto a past verb دلت it shows على أحد معنيين one of two meanings if قد ever enters onto a ماضي it shows one of two meanings وهما and they both are التحقيق والتقريب التحقيق والتقريب the first one is التحقيق تحقيق means what? surely it shows that meaning surely indeed that meaning is what carries meaning it's sure definite the second one is التقريب تقريب means what? close close and the sheikh is going to give us examples of that فمثال دلالتها على التحقيق قوله تعالى it's showing the meaning of التحقيق meaning surely or indeed it's showing that meaning is in this example in the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قد أفلح المؤمنون سورة المؤمنون آية the first آية قد surely indeed verily this is تحقيق it's one of the two meanings that it takes when it's in a ماضي where's the ماضي أفلح أفلح is what it's a past verb it's a past verb. قد أفلح المؤمنون The believers are indeed successful. أفلح means success, prosperity. They've received it, the believers. وقوله And also the speech of Allah. Another time that it shows that meaning. وقوله جل شأنه And also the speech of the what جل means the one that is majestic. شأنه is a phase, is majestic. لقد Pay attention here. قد is what? تحقيق. لام is what? لام توكيد. So when they both enter, they have a powerful meaning now. They're both what? Indeed, verily. Both of them. In the Arabic language, because the Arabic language is very strong, the meaning goes up. But in English, all you're going to say, لقد again is what? Indeed, surely. Because it's a language which is weak in its translation. Good. لقد رضي الله لقد رضي الله عن المؤمنين. So Allah surely and is indeed pleased with what the believers. لقد رضي الله عن المؤمنين. سورة الفتح آية seventeen. آية eighteen. آية eighteen. Both of those times, what meaning has it shown? It entered. رضي is a past tense, right? The word لقد رضي رضي is past. The verb here رضي is what? فعل ماضي. It's past verb. Good. And أفلح is what? It's a past verb. قد went before it. What does it mean here right now? It means التحقيق. What does it mean? التحقيق. That's the first meaning that it has. We're still in the first meaning. وقولنا 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 and our speech which we say قد حضر محمد Verily, indeed, surely, Muhammad has come. Muhammad has come. That is, تحقيق. حضر is a فعل ماضي. قد is what? It's a تحقيق here. وقولنا and our speech. قد سافر خالد. خالد has surely traveled. قد سافر خالد. Surely Khalid has traveled. All of those meanings is a تحقيق. ومثال دلالتها على التقريب 
and it's showing taqrib. Taqrib means it's close. Huh? The second meaning now. Now, first meaning was what? At tahqiq. The second meaning that it shows when it enters the fi'il madhi is what? At taqrib. Taqrib is here now. It is وَمِثَالُ دَلَالَتِهَا An example of it indicating or showing على التقريب that it's close. قول المقيم It's the speech of the one who's doing the iqama. مقيم The one that's doing the iqama when he says قَدْ قَامَتِ الصَّلَةِ The قَدْ here means what? أَيْ قَرُبَتِ الصَّلَةِ The salah is close. قَدْ قَامَتِ الصَّلَةُ قَرُبَتْ Waktu salah, the time of the prayer is what? It's close. <coughs> or when you say, <laughs> The sun has set. Meaning, the setting of the sun is close. That will only mean like in a taqrib when what? Before the sun sets. Are you with me? It's before. That's the, that's the shart here right now. If you say, قَدْ غَرِبَتِ الشَّمْسِ after it's set, then it becomes what? A tahqiq. But if you say before it's time, you meaning it's close for it to set. Okay? Okay. وَإِذَا دَخَلَتْ عَلَى الْفِعْلِ الْمُضَارِعِ We've finished fi'l madhi now. What about if it enters a fi'l madhi? Uh, fi'l mudari'. وَإِذَا دَخَلَتْ if it enters. What are we talking about? If قَدْ enters a fi'l mudari'. دلت على أحد معنيين أيضا It also shows one of two meanings. So if, I, if it enters a fi'l mudari' If قد enters a fi'l mudari' It shows one of two meanings. What is it? التقليل والتكثير Little and a lot. تقليل is little. And what? التكثير a lot. So if he enters a fi'l mudari' you're either trying to say this is little does that happen or you're trying to say a lot does that happen. Those two opposites قد is used for the fi'l mudari' Example فَأَمَّا دَلَالَتُهَا عَلَى التَّقْلِيلِ It's showing the meaning taqleel little It's showing that meaning is in this example فَنَحْوُ قَوْلِكَ It's like your, your statement a speech you say قَدْ يَصْدُقُ الْكَذُوبُ قَدْ يَصْدُقُ الْكَذُوبُ The the liar the liar he may tell the truth. Here what is it? Is it a lot or is it little? A little. Because a liar naturally is a liar. He does more lies than he tells the truth. That's why he's called a a liar. Good. قَدْ يَصْدُقُ الْكَذُوبُ قَدْ يَصْدُقُ الْكَذُوبُ The liar may tell the he may tell the truth. The liar may tell the truth. The kadhub is not even a liar. Kadhub is a compulsive liar. Kadhib is a liar. Kadhib is a liar. Kadhub is the one who lies even when there's no need for him to lie. It's a compulsive liar. Have you not seen those type of people? There's no reason for him to lie. There's no haja. There's no... Nothing's pushing him to it. Just so he what? He says to you, Akhi, I own a mansion, just like that. You see, just like that, and he lives in a, he lives in a state. He lives in a, a rundown state. He will say to you, I own a, I own a mansion. What forced him to say that? Nothing. This is called a kadhub. Are you with me? Lakin a kadhib is the one who lies a lot. He's lying as more than his truth. But he only lies when there's hajj. Whenever he feels like, ah, lie. He gets himself out of things. You see? إذن على كل حال قد يصدق الكذوب But he can tell the truth at times. Good. All of those is when it shows little. وقولك your statement when you say قد يجود البخيل The stingy one can be what? قد يجود يجود جواد is one that generous. A stingy one can be generous at times. Can he not? Huh. There's those some people whose hands shake when they have to give, like shakes, just cannot give. They hate putting their hands in their pocket to give to somebody. He's reached that level of, what? He's reached that level of bukhl. 
Ha. He reached that level of Bukhl. So you say, Qad yajudul bakhilu. There's little. How little is a bakhil going to give? Wa qawlika your statement, Qad yanjahul balidu. The one who is unlearned or lazy, who doesn't want to, who doesn't put effort in, he what? He can, he can pass that time. He passes. Little lacking does that happen. The one that's like from the general mass or something. 